Hi everyone, this is Holly Jackson and one of the librarians at North Hall Library. I'm excited to talk to you today about integrating your sources and this is another research tips video from North Hall Library. So as you're doing your research and you're putting together um, all the information you need to write your paper, oftentimes I hear people talk about um, something like a writing timeline, right? They've got this order of things that needs to happen before their paper is magically completed. They might do some topic development, um, then they do the reading and the notes, they might organize it into an outline, they write a draft, they revise, they submit the paper. This sounds fairly familiar to you. I'm not surprised, but the honest truth is that there is no timeline. Uh, everybody writes a paper differently, everybody does their research differently, and it can be absolutely all over the place. So let me just dispel that myth now. There is no one writing timeline, and if you do things differently than that original order, that's totally okay, as long as it works for you and you're getting the research and the paper done. So as we go to include any research in your paper, you want to use what we call the ICE method. And that's where you introduce whatever it is that you're about to introduce, um, whether it's a quote or a summary or a paraphrase, introduce where you found that information. And then cite it and then follow up with an explanation. So how does this tie into your paper, your points that you're making? The one thing that you want to do throughout all of this is use signal phrases. So these are what you use as you introduce your quote, your summary, or your paraphrase, which are the three main ways that we include research in our papers. You want to introduce how what you're including from the source relates to your topic. So again, everything has to tie into that research question that you're trying to answer with your paper. And this can include who the author or authors are, what organization is behind the research, where the source came from. Any or all of that is really great in a signal phrase. You just don't want to drop a quote into the paper without an introduction. Um, that's what I call quote dumping and I hate it when I look at students papers and they haven't given me any kind of an introduction, they've just thrown the quote in there. So here's some examples of signal phrases. John Doe 2020, an international environmental program specialist with the Environmental Protection Agency acknowledges that, whatever your quote is, and then you follow up with that citation. Um, in Citizen Science in the Digital Age, Rhetoric, Science, and Public Engagement, James Wynn emphasizes that, whatever your quote is. And in the words of the Nobel Prize winning physicist Duncan Haldane, whatever your quote is. You can see that these are three different ways to introduce the topic. Some of them have specific author names, some of them have where this person works or you know, what they're known for. Uh, one of them is a book title, but they're all decent signal phrases. So why is this important? Signal phrases can help you acknowledge who is expressing a quote or idea, how the quote or idea works with your research question, and where you're going in the paper with this quote or this idea. So direct quotations are something that are best used sparingly. I know these are the easiest things for us to use and that we tend to use them a lot in our papers, but you really only wanna use them if the wording is highly technical, if it's important to show the exact wording, like you're looking at an interview or right now a debate, uh, like our presidential election debates, or when you're analyzing or interpreting a passage. This I especially see in the humanities. But some areas will actually limit you on the number of quotes that you're allowed to use in your paper. So you really wanna be careful with how many you're throwing in there. Here's an example. Barney Stinson, a main character from the television show How I Met Your Mother, once said, when I'm sad, I stop being sad and be awesome instead. This inspirational quote has been used to, and then I would tie it into this fictional paper that I'm writing. So why is this important? Direct quotations provide support for your ideas. They allow you to analyze passages or specific data from another source, and they should be used sparingly so that your ideas and your voice really shine through a paper. So let's move on to summarizing. Summarizing is about main points, main ideas, and major support. It is all about the big picture and not about the small details. And because I'm an art person, I'm going to compare this to an impressionist painting. So this is Monet's House's Parliament Effect of Sunlight in the Fog. And so this is exactly like what summarizing is like. 
I know you might not see that right now, but impressionist painting is about giving you the feel for something without going into all the tiny details. So you get the impression of it without going into those details. So let's play a short game. Um, I'm going to read these out and I want you to try to guess what movie you think these descriptions or these summaries are describing. Uh, so the first one is a man goes on a long journey to deliver a package. The second one is a cowboy must deal with an unwelcome alien. The third one is an orphan discovers that he has magic powers and saves the world. The fourth one is a reluctant hero competes for the freedom of their people and inspires them to believe that they are strong enough to defeat their foes. And the fifth and final one is a father vows to get his child or children back no matter the cost. Can you think of some movies that these summaries describe? Let's go over them. A Man Goes on a Long Journey to Deliver a Package could be any number of movies, right? Lord of the Rings and Cast Away are just two examples, and I've heard several others. So why are we looking at multiple movies for these? Well, these summaries are too short. They could describe almost anything. A Cowboy Must Deal with an Unwelcome Alien could be Toy Story, or it could be Cowboys and Aliens. An orphan discovers he has magic powers and saves the world, Star Wars and Harry Potter. A reluctant hero competes for the freedom of their people and inspires them to believe that they are strong enough to defeat their foes, could be Space Jam, which is awesome if you haven't seen it, by the way, um, or The Hunger Games, or again, any other number of movies. A father vows to get his child or children back no matter the cost. Uh, quite a difference between these two, but it could be Mrs. Doubtfire or it could be Taken. So you want to be careful with your summaries. You don't want them to be too short or somebody could misinterpret where that information came from. So why is this important? Summaries show that you've done your research and that you're capable of concisely stating what the current scholarship in the field is saying. And it helps you to recognize important ideas in a text and to ignore irrelevant information. Paraphrasing is something that I've heard some people mix up with summarizing. Um, in the past, I've heard some people tell me they were told these are the same thing, uh, but they're not. Paraphrasing is about putting a direct quote in your own words. Uh, so the pro of this is that it's the type of integration that your professors and most journals want you to want to see because it shows that you are synthesizing the material that you're reading. You're being able to put it in your own words. The con is that this is the easiest method to plagiarize because if you're reading something enough times that you're able to actually paraphrase it, it can get a little bit confusing. You might think that it's just common knowledge that you've learned over time. But even things that you consider common knowledge, you should probably be citing in your papers. This is all about the details. It's not about big picture. So here's an actual photo of the Houses of Parliament in fog. And you can see a lot more of the details than you could in that Impressionist painting that we compare to summarizing. So here's an example of uh, paraphrasing. So the original text says, we have already seen that one of the results stemming from the shift from the oral to the literary and the institutionalization of the fairy tale was a loss of live contact with the storyteller and a sense of community or commonality. And this is a quote coming from Jack Zipes, who is a well-renowned fairy tale expert and his book, Fairy Tale as Myth, Myth as Fairy Tale. So paraphrase, we could say that Jack Sipes insists the connection that is created by sharing fairy tales verbally between people has been lost over time as fairy tales began being shared as print materials instead of being shared by word of mouth. So this is taking that quote, it's making it a little bit easier to understand, it's putting it in our own words, and then we can tie that into our research. So if we're comparing summarizing versus paraphrasing, summaries are taking multiple paragraphs, maybe even an entire book or article and just condensing it into a few sentences. It's all about the main ideas and themes and it's much shorter and more general than the author's original version. Paraphrasing is taking a direct quotation and putting it into your own words. It's very detailed and specific and it's around the same length and level of detail as the original quote. It might even be a little bit longer. 
So some tips. As you're reading the text that you want to paraphrase, underline or highlight the quotes if it's your copy or make notes if it's not your copy. And then in your notes, take the parts that you want to paraphrase from the article or the book and put them in your own words. Make sure that you're jotting down the page numbers on the citation because there's nothing worse than having to flip back through all these articles to find what it is you're talking about. And then when you're writing your paper, paraphrase from your notes instead of the article so that the wording is more of your own than the author's and it's a true paraphrasing. So why is this important? Paraphrasing shows you've not only read an entire book or an article, but that you're taking the ideas shared and you're synthesizing them. You're explaining them in your own terms. And it's what many professors and journals are going to expect to see in your papers and your articles. So if you have any questions about integrating sources into your paper, you can always ask a librarian at lib.mansfield.edu. You can chat with us, email us, call us, or visit us. You can also um, talk to your professor or even drop by the Writing Center and ask somebody if they would be willing to talk with you about if you've done this correctly. So take advantage of all the help that's available to you. And if you have questions, let us know. Have a great rest of the day.